beat. You're far too quiet this morning. What's going on? What's that, what happened to that chatty Gabby group that I know? You're smiling anyway. That's that's great. Hey, uh, you see me? You caught me with my bottle. I I know it might look like I'm reverting and back on the bottle, but no, I'm not. Um, uh, this is a reminder for us that next week all these bottles need to be back. Okay. And if you've taken one of these and put your change in it for the uh, for the pregnancy center. Um, we want to make sure we get these back next week, and um, it doesn't. You don't have to. You don't have to kill your neighbor to get their change or whatever. You know, I mean, knock off someone to get their change just so you can fill your bottle. You bring it in, no matter what. Okay, uh, if you've got this much or this much, doesn't really matter. There are no names on these, so we're not judging anyone, okay? So you just bring it on in. And whatever you've got, whatever you've collected, it'll be helpful for the Pregnancy Center, and I encourage you to, uh, uh, to, to be a part of that and bring them in next week. If you want, and you've just, just found out about this, I think there's some extra bottles back there. You can grab this one from up here and, uh, and fill it up as far as you can this week, okay? So next week is the due date for those. I encourage you to bring them in. We've got a couple other things uh, going on. Uh, the, well, the, the big thing right now today is our first Sunday night special. And uh, it's happening out at Camp Lael. We'll be under the pavilions out by the, the, uh, the swimming area. Uh, so uh, I encourage you to be a part of that. It looks like uh, it's a little cloudy out there now, but that's supposed to clear up and, uh, and we're supposed to have a really nice day uh, as we go out there, we'll be meeting at 6 o'clock tonight, and that's at Camp Lael. The address is in your bulletin uh, right there for you. If you need any more instructions on how to, 
how to get out there, ask Reba, okay? <laughs> I, I ask myself all the time, where am I? That's what it is, yeah. All right. So 6 p.m., 6 p.m. tonight, uh, that's happening. And we're having f to eat uh, sort of a main course thing. It's going to be pretty, pretty simple. We're going to have uh, 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 kogels, and um, we're going to have pulled pork. And so those are the main things and whatever else you might provide. So uh, come on out and uh, bring your friends, your enemies. I don't care who you bring. You can bring, bring them on out. It's going to be fun. We're going to play cornhole. There's fishing. There's, uh, I think that, um, I think I was told that the boats and stuff will be available to use those. And uh, if you're bold enough, you can go swimming, okay? And if you're not bold enough and somebody doesn't like you and you get close to the water, you may go swimming, okay? All righty. So anyway, um, just uh, come on out. It's going to be a great time. Just so you are aware, um, these things are not, uh, you know, not uh, deep at all as far as, it's just a friendship thing. We're coming out to enjoy the family together. Uh, Connie is going to do a, a, a sermon on uh, the five steps to perf perfection, and um, <laughs> she may stop at four, I don't know, but uh, anyway, I told her the other day she should preach. And she laughed. I don't know why, but anyway, um, she, there is no there is no devotion. There is no sermon. Uh, you can you can be guaranteed when you come out. It's just going to be fun, gabbing, laughter, just a good time with the family. And I encourage you to be a part of that. It's really fun. So that's six o'clock tonight, Camp Lael. Uh, you can bring your lawn chairs if you'd like a comfy seat. Otherwise, there are, there are picnic tables there for you to to eat uh, to enjoy the food. So, uh, so that's it. Um, love to see you tonight. If you wouldn't mind, if you're planning on going and you haven't yet signed up, would you make sure to sign that list? It helps me to know how many plates and other things we might need. And uh, I want to make sure there's enough drinks and food. So uh, we're providing the drinks and the main course. You provide the other things and your great personality. Bring it on out, 6 o'clock tonight. We'd love to see you. Well, that's it. Let's do it. Okay. All right, let's stand while we sing.
Lord God, we are a blessed people. As others walk around and wonder what they are going to do, you've told us what to do. You have, you have given us the boundaries. You have told us what to do. You have directed our path. You give us understanding through your Holy Spirit. You have provided for us everlasting life through Jesus Christ and his death upon the cross. Lord God, you have given us all things to give us understanding in this weird world. While others walk around and they're trying to figure it out, you figured it out for us. So Lord, as we trust you and walk with you, help us to not doubt. Help us, Lord, instead to to faithfully follow, even though things might look dark, even though the path may look windy, or even going the wrong way. Help us to trust you. Help us to trust you when this economy fails. Help us to trust you that we have enough. Help us to trust you, Lord, when, when things are upside down, and people tell us that we are wrong. We pray, Lord, that we will continually follow you because when we follow you, we follow you into greatness. We follow you into everlasting life. So Lord, help us today to have strength in you and not in ourselves. Understanding in your word and not what makes sense to us. We give you praise and look forward to your direction today as we celebrate you, our Lord, Jesus Christ, our Savior. In Jesus' name, amen.
about tithing and all that kind of stuff. And tithing was something, as a preacher's kid, we were taught about tithing from the very beginning of time. <laughs> when we got something from the tooth fairy, like if you got a dollar from the tooth fairy, you put a dime in the offering plate. That was just just how it was. So tithing was kind of a, of a natural thing for me growing up. But when I was 14, just a couple of years ago, I sang in a group. It was called Ministry and Rhythm. And we toured around to different churches. And I needed a pair of navy blue pants to sing. That was what we were, we were wearing, navy blue pants. And I can't remember what color shirt. But anyway, I didn't have any navy blue pants. And my dad, being a pastor, there wasn't a lot of extra money. So I decided that I was going to use my babysitting money because that was my job back then. I made a whole dollar an hour. Big money back then. Anyway, I had babysat that Friday night. And Saturday morning, my mom and I went to go see if we could find some pants. And I had just enough money that I had saved to buy a pair of pants if I didn't pay my tithe dilemma. Mom didn't say anything. She let me make the decision. So I decided that I would do what I knew God wanted me to do and that I would pay my tithe on Sunday. And I was babysitting the next weekend, so I figured I'd come back the following Saturday and get the pants. So on Sunday morning, I paid my tithe like I was a, like a good girl. And there was a box of clothes that somebody had brought to the church for me. There were several things in it, you know, and I hadn't had hand-me-downs for a while because, you know, you get a little bigger and clothes get worn out. But anyway, um, inside the box, there were several things, like I said, toward the bottom was a pair of navy blue pants with the tags still on them that were nicer than the pants that I would have gotten from the store the day before. Now, were those pants already in there? I'm sure they were. But God wanted to teach a 14-year-old kid that tithing really was important. So as I've gotten older, it hasn't been real hard to agree to give that 10%. First, right off the top, Mike and I do it all the time. But... There's other things for me that are hard, like giving up control when I really don't have control, trying to take control of things and not let God deal with it. Things that I I really don't have control over, but I want to. Anybody like that besides me? Especially when it comes to my kids. Chelsea was going through sort of a rough time the last couple of months. And I wanted so bad to fix it, and there was nothing I could do. And finally, God said, hey, Reeb, I love her more than you do. What are you worrying about? And you know, we brought those goofy pants to my mind. So maybe your problem isn't tithing. Maybe you tithe really well. Maybe you're like me. Maybe it's a control thing. Letting God control all those things in our lives, not just the... Because, you know, tithing, we really kind of do have control of that blessing. But I know some people, I mean, you're trying to stick that check in, and it's, it's hard. So as we sing this next song, ask God to bring to your mind what it is that you need to work on. Tithing, control, or maybe something else. And then ask God to help you fix it. That's the only thing that works for me. And I bet it worked for you too. Let's sing together.
to teach me that lesson. And I thank you that you bring that lesson to my mind many times. Lord, I know that there are many things that we need your help with. Father, help us to have hearts that are softened to you. Like the song said earlier, when we follow you, we know we're going the right way. And the world is so confusing right now and so scary right now. Things are happening that I know I never thought would happen in my lifetime in this country. Father, help us to just lean on you and trust you in everything. Because, Father, you are what we need. We don't have power to change anything, but you have control of everything. Lord, help us to please you in what we do, what we say, and help us to give hope to those around us because we have hope from you. Father, thank you for all that you do. We really do need you. In your name I pray. Amen. Please stand as we sing this last song.
They sound good, don't they? Sounds great. Thank you. So do you think, as a church, we ought to be teaching people how to read their Bible, understand their Bible? As a church, do you think we should maybe teach people how to relate to one another and how to have healthy relationships? I ask you these questions because as a church, we know that we need to do this. The Bible is full of information, things, truths that we need to know and share to others. And we need to make sure that we are, as a church, doing the things that teach people how to live and how to be in line with where God would want them to be. And the same thing is true when it comes to our finances. You understand that people get a little freaked out when we start talking about finances in church, about money and God. But wouldn't it be a tragedy to avoid that because we're not wanting to maybe sound like one of those churches that's always talking about money? You know those churches, you know? We don't want to we don't want to put people off But in doing so, wouldn't it be a tragedy if we were to miss this and to not teach people how to wisely deal with money and money issues? That's why I'm doing this series. I want you to know that this is a normal, natural part of teaching the truths of God, making sure that we don't avoid anything because someone out there. I don't know who someone is, but someone might have an issue with it, might have a problem with it. I am not one who runs from fear. In fact, if I think that there might be pushback, I sort of, I sort of am, God sort of created a bull with me. I'm not the fearful one. I'm sort of the bull one. And I really have to watch this. You know, I have to, I have to watch it. But, but when there's a little pushback, it usually tells me that's what you need to push on because that's the part that is still sensitive. And that's the part that needs more insight. And so finances is where we are. And, and money and God dealing with these, these correctly making sure that God's got his place and we don't infringe on that in any way. I take you back to the story that we used last week. It's the, uh, the story about the, I call it the bagger story. It's the story of the, of the, the three that received the bags of silver. And, and it says here in, in Matthew 25, Uh, verse 1. Again, the kingdom of heaven can be illustrated by the story of a man going on a long trip. He called together his servants and entrusted his money to them while he was gone. He entrusted his money to them. Everything belongs to God. He gave five bags of silver to one, two bags of silver to another, and one bag of silver to the last dividing it in proportion to their abilities than he left on his trip. So this story is being told by Jesus. The emphasis is not on the amount given to each of them. I want you to understand that's not the emphasis. The emphasis is on what they did with the money that was given to them or the this bags of silver that was given to them. I'm not going to go into detail about that story again because that was last week and this is this week, so we're going to move on to new things. But I do want to use this as a basis of understanding today because the emphasis is not on how much they got. The emphasis is on what they did with what they got. That's where it is. And it's also important to point out that this very important part, the phrase, each was given what they received in proportion 
to their abilities. In proportion to their abilities. You see, what Jesus is mentioning here is that, is that it didn't need to be determined what they were to receive. Their abilities pointed it out. Their abilities? Their ability to handle money. That's what it is. Their ability to handle money. The way we deal with what God has given determines what God will give in the future. God has already blessed us with things, and and how we deal with those things will determine how much more we'll be blessed with in the future. We've been given control of our future. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? When you think about that, just let that sink in. We have been given control of our future. But this story is not just telling us what will happen in the future. It has also revealed that you and I have already been tested with what he's already given us. This is the truth. Here it is. We show God what our ability is by our previous actions. What we've already done with what he's already given. It's either, Lord, give me more. I've handled what you've given me already wisely. Or, Lord, Give me less because I've proven I can't handle it. You see how that works? People might find, they might find it a little out of bounds for God to use our past actions as the means of judging what we can be trusted with in the future. But that's exactly what his financial test is all about. Can you and I be trusted with more? So now that you know this, do you want a financial retest? We can begin today to financially realign ourselves by living within the limitations God has given to us. It's called living within our means. The test is living within the limits that God has given and not fighting against those limits. The limits that God has put in place or getting frustrated with God by those limits. They are there for a reason. Accepting God's blessings. Oh, we're good at that, aren't we? Um, How many here today are good at receiving God's blessings? Anyone here? Anyone here? Just acknowledge that by raising a hand. Yeah, yeah. And and what about the God's limitations? Um, How many of you here are good at receiving God's limitations without an attitude? Huh? Limitations. They're there. God puts them there too. Our story last week about the three servants, the one that I was reading to you, the three servants, they were, they were given bags of silver to invest for their, for their master. I suspect that the, that the five-bag guy He was smiling large, don't you think? (laughs) Don't you think? Huh? You think he was just, oh, Lord, you're so awesome and good. And yes, he had been blessed. But what about the one beggar guy? The one beggar. Is he smiling large too? 
Is he walking around going, I got my bag. I'm so blessed. Do you think? You think the guy with the one bag limitation was looking around going, see the obvious problem is that is that we judge God's blessing not on if we have enough to eat, something to wear, and a place to sleep, the basics of life. We judge God's blessing toward us in comparison to others. What I have compared to what you have. what we want and what God has supplied of our wants. We judge God and say, I want. But God's word says in Hebrews 13, 5, don't love money. Be satisfied with what you have. For God has said, I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. What is God telling us in this verse when he says, be satisfied with with what you have? It's two words we hate the most in the English language. Two words... Discipline yourself. Wow. Those two words. Discipline yourself. I don't like it when others discipline me. I didn't like it when my mom and dad disciplined me. I can imagine that I probably won't like it when I discipline me either. You know, we're just, we're just discipline of. Uh, allergic to discipline we don't like that we don't like it and to discipline ourselves that means I am responsible for making sure that I control this I control my wants I control myself discipline yourself in the boundaries God has given you What does the discipline look like? Here's the story for you. A young mother had had a $200 bill to pay. It was totally unexpected, the expense, but an expense just the same. She was a young Christian who tried to live by faith. But this was a very difficult time for her and her young child. The funds had been tight, and now this unexpected bill. She shared with a Monday night Bible study group her prayer request. It was the first time she had attended this group. But she felt it was on her, it was on her mind, on her heart. And she shared with them a little bit about, about her prayer request. Not in great detail. But she shared with them. She shared with them only that she had to have her prayer answered. In eight days, by next Tuesday, that was the deadline. Seven days went by. It's Monday night again. No answer. A bit angry with God, she decided she wasn't in the mood to go to Bible study. So she stayed in her apartment, frustrated with the lack of response from her prayer. 
In that moment of frustration, she pulled out her MasterCard, and on her, fo on her phone, she paid the quick care medical bill. At that very moment, there was another woman just two miles down the road. She's outside of an apartment building where a Bible study group is going on, waiting for this young mother to come to Bible study again. Earlier that day, she had gone to the bank to withdraw $200 from her checking account because she had a distinct sense that God was wanting her to give that $200 to that young mother. The woman who was waiting with the money never saw this young mother again and she was somewhat confused. Did she misinterpret God's prompting as she prayed that morning in her quiet time? At the same time, the young mother who asked for prayer continued to be frustrated that God didn't do what he promised. So much for God's promises, she said, as she thought back to that verse that the pastor had preached weeks before, Philippians 4.19. And this same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs from his glorious riches, which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. When her next MasterCard bill came, she questioned again where God was and if his promises could ever be trusted and why she was forced to put the $200 medical expense on her credit card. Today, it has become very easy to force the timing of things by relying on our God. Our God of choice. This one is a a city visa. You might have MasterCard. You might have Amer American Express or Discovery Card or Discover Card, whatever they call it today. What is the name of your God is the question today. What is the name of your God? The first commandment is key. It was Jesus who said, you cannot have two masters. No one can serve two masters, the scripture says, for you will hate one and love the other. You will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. One will win and one will serve the other. How could you tell if a, if a person has chosen to serve money as their God? Look at their financial discipline. What has taken control? That's why the test is with the small things from the scripture last week. It's with the small things, the small amounts, to determine if you are disciplined enough, if you will discipline yourself enough to handle more or not. Using your credit card 
to answer your prayer steps all over God's timing. As the young mother figured out, a credit card can easily remove the need for greater faith. A credit card can supply our needs. It can supply our wants. It can be used in our exact timing so that we never have to wait. It can stunt our spiritual growth, our reliance and trust in God's provision, in God's timing. The scripture says in Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. In those days when you pray, when you pray I will listen. And Mike, and if Mike doesn't like waiting, if Mike is unwilling to pray and wait for understanding, I'll just make my own plans and provide for myself what I want, when I want it. And this credit card here gives me $40,000 of freedom right here. It's an experience in an in instant gratification, right here, without permission, without explanation, no explanation needed. I put it down there, run it across there, slide it through, stick it in, it doesn't matter. It all comes out the same, doesn't it? I can have instant gratification with this. $40,000 limit is what's on this card. Why? I have no clue. But is that temptation or what? It's just a piece of plastic. Yeah, it is. But is it? Is it just a piece of plastic? You know, it says city right up here. City. I want you to listen to, to just a minute here of what City is promoting in their advertising. I'll go through it with you. Their slogan, City Never Sleeps. That's a good one, huh? City Never Sleeps. Their logo, the color red symbolizes passion. Isn't that good? These guys, they're good. they're good. So, whatever your passion, we've got you covered. The umbrella. Huh? That's pretty awesome when you think about it. Listen to that. I mean, whatever your passion, we got you covered. That's what's on this card. That's what this symbolizes. Right here, in many ways, it is easier to let God be God when it comes to health issues because our choices are many times limited. We've got to walk through things when it comes to our health problems because we're limited. We got to walk through it because what choice do we have? The question is, what choice do I have? And so we pray and ask for the Lord's guidance and we try to stick with him and through that time, there is no quick fix. When we're having relational problems with someone, sometimes we, we can, all we can do is wait. The other person has got to be ready. They've got to be open to work things out. So I pray and I say, Lord, Provide the timing so that I can get right with this person. Provide that open door, Lord. In your time, in your way, Lord, I pray that that door 
would be opened. And we wait because you see there's nothing else we can do. But financial stuff is different, isn't it? There are things that we can do, shortcuts that we can make that cut out the weight. The first commandment, do not have any other God before me. What does God do? God provides our needs. He answers our prayers. He provides for our needs. He can even answer my prayer. You see, what is the name of your God? What have we been commanded? Keep in step with the Holy Spirit. But what can easily get in the way of keeping in step with the Holy Spirit? Using a false God to supply our wants can allow us to have our want request instantly answered. It's a lot of power in our hands. Look at the financial trap. Look at the financial disaster. How many people do you know of who are in financial disaster today because of the plastic God? Look at the trap and see clearly who will be served. Submission to God is a difficult thing when it comes to finances, especially when we've got quick and easy alternatives. Being still and letting God be God takes a lot of personal discipline. How many blessings have I missed? Because I played God. I jumped in with my plastic God rather than waiting for the real God. He is to provide my needs in his perfect timing. He even provides some of my my wants. Hasn't he supplied some of yours? But this God can too, up to the limit. The scripture specifically says, thou shalt have no other gods before me. But we never consider the plastic God in our wallet, the supplier of all of our needs and wants, whenever, wherever we want it. Oh, in that story, about those guys who received those bags of silver. It's been updated. It has been. It's been modernized. Lord, you gave me two bags of silver to invest, but I knew I deserved more, so this plastic here gave me two more bags. Thank you, master. Card? It truly can be the master, can't it? Or you can master it. 
The choice is yours. But this is the truth. You cannot serve two masters. One will win. Only one. And one will serve the other. Let's pray. Lord God, in this place right now, we pray that you will guide us into understanding. Temptation is all around us, Lord, and you know it. Temptation is there to to pull the trigger and do for you what you haven't done for us. The temptation is there constantly. I pray that you will help us to discipline ourselves so that we can financially live within the means that you've given to us. Let you be the guide and not rely on other things to provide stuff outside of the means that you, the limits that you have given. Lord, help us today to let you be God and you alone and to understand clearly what you expect. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the truth. The truth that guides us into an understanding that this world does not have. For you have told us that you are to be first. Always first. May that be so, Lord. As we deal with our finances and we get control of these credit cards so that you are pleased with what you see and are able to raise the limit on your blessing that you give to us. Help us to be wise, disciplined, and happy with what you've given. Thank you, Lord. We lift you up as our God. In Jesus' name, amen. Before I go today, I want to make sure you understand something. Because after today's message, it might be one of those things where you say, "Uh uh-oh, he's saying that credit cards are bad. I'm not saying that. Don't get me wrong here. I've got one, okay? I'm not convicted that I have one. But I'll tell you what I do. And this may be the stupidest thing you've ever heard. I'll, I'll admit it this morning, okay? Here it is. You ready? You see, on this, on this credit card here, this shows the, the dumb things that we do for a little bit. On this credit card here, we are given uh, money back as we use it. And so what I do with this credit card is I use it only when I've got the cash that I put in an envelope and it's set aside so that I can pay the bill when it comes. That's the only time we use this thing, when we've got the money to back it up. You see, we deal with cash. We don't deal with a credit card. But I use this card as a means of not having to carry around a lot of cash at times. And so I use this, but the cash is always there in advance so that we do not get stuck with having a bill that we cannot pay. God, I believe, I don't believe that this is is something that is going to be a conviction for me because it's not been so far. But I want you to know, if you have a problem with your credit card, that might be a conviction that you need to stop using that. You might even need to tear it up, to cut it up. But understand, 
It cannot be your God. We need to be wise. So be wise, be free, and enjoy God's blessings. Have a great day, folks.